Hey, what's up everybody? Rev Sauce Knight. So I thought I would do something uniquely different with my reviews. Usually you guys see me, I'm doing this on OBS. I, you guys see the background. Well, you guys are seeing my three computer monitors, PlayStation 5 in the background, Lakers and stuff. You guys are seeing different, you know, different side of my setup and everything and all the good stuff, the lighting that I have behind me and all that. Um, I thought I would do something different. So I've taken a take with my Lavier mic and I played it back in DaVinci Resolve and it was freaking horrible. Absolutely AIDS. Like the thing was just terribly bad. It was like, it was like cancer to my ears. It was terrible. And I didn't want to put that out to you guys. So I thought I would retake this with my Apple earbuds and just be a little bit more closer to the camera. 1080p 60 HDR MV4 on my iPhone 13 mini. Hopefully it looks good to you guys. We're going to be covering Monday Night Raw, the go-home show for Crown Jewel. That is for Monday, October 28th, 2024. I'm going to go over a little bit of everything. Over the weekend, I've been doing a lot of cleaning out. I've been doing a little bit of recessing my channel, changed some banners, changed some things, made it look a little bit more professional for you guys, a little bit more pristine and clean. I've been clearing out the swamp of people that just don't really support me anymore that said they were going to support me. Uh, I reconnected with a few people over the weekend, which was really cool. And uh, yeah, I've just been busy with life, man, watching the Dodgers. I, I kind of needed sleep because I've been doing marathon streaming and I just kind of, my body just needed to shut down over the weekend. I apologize that I did not have a review up for Halloween Havoc or Bound for Glory. I will be recapping it in this video, my thoughts on those things. I did talk about it on Saturday night, Bound for Glory. Sunday, I kind of slept all day and I missed out on um, Halloween Havoc. So I apologize for those missing other things as it was happening live. Now, I'm going to be doing uploads more often than lives. So just be prepared for that for now. And then I'll bring back the live streams. You guys know the deal. When I get really busy with other things, I tend to upload more than do lives. We will be live streaming here and there on YouTube, though. I will not be neglecting going live on YouTube, but for now, uploads will be the thing here on this very channel. Now, I want to say something real quickly to you guys. Um, JD from New York did block me. I found that to be hilarious for having a difference in opinion. After he blocked me, he decided to shit on us that were having that difference in opinion. Basically, the difference in opinion was over uh, the idea of when should you give title belts to people? And my argument was basically difference in opinion. Basically, the motor machine guns didn't even have a cup of coffee and they're getting titles handed to them. And that's just allowed. But if AEW does it, we got to shit and hate on it, right? Tony Khan's the worst broker of the year, right? Which I don't understand that. If you're gonna give if you're gonna give AEW shit, you gotta give it back to WWE. You can't have it vice versa. And the comparisons that Mr. JD from New York was comparing it to, Okada, Mercedes Monet, and a few others, I disagree with that because Monet had storylines and stuff leading up to her winning the title. And Camille was brought in to be her bodyguard before she won the title. So again, Okada went through a tournament. He did not just go through five, six, he went through more than five matches to get those titles. Again, I disagree with JD from New York. JD wants to sit back and bad mouth AEW and he's miserably failing. Then he wants to say, we're all, we just don't get it. We don't understand it. But my dude, the Motor City Machine Guns didn't even have a build. They had a couple of vignettes. They didn't really have a cup of coffee and you're just handing them a title. But meanwhile, you're the same very person that says Ricochet can't have a title. That's just really absurd to me as a person. It's actually asinine and ignorant to me. And I don't care if he blocked me. It was just the sheer fact I want to address it here that it was just over an opinion and that was it. He, it's his page. It's his channel. He can do whatever the fuck he likes, just like I can. But at the end of the day, your opinions are welcome. Good, bad, or indifferent. They're welcomed here. I'm not going to block you because you have a difference in opinion than me. I will never silence somebody for having a difference in opinion. Unless you are targeting me or threatening me. There's a difference. So anyway, hopefully this mic sounds okay. 
We're going to get into Monday Night Raw for Crown Jewel. Dominic Mysterio winning tonight against Damian Priest. Good stuff. That's what they need to be doing. Jimmy and Jay having a segment. Good stuff. Now you get into the whole LWO and American Made. That is really hokey pokey stupid. Yes, stupid booking. Within two hours, you need to make these shows rememberable. You need to make it fire and desire. You gotta be, you gotta be like this. And WWE does not. WWE decides to put these throwaway matches within main card shit. Bronson Reed and literally Seth Rollins, good shit. Love the whole thing. Love what they're building. Seth Rollins needs to put Bronson Reed over at this point. Same with Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel Rodriguez needs to go over at this point. You turned her face, or sorry, heel, my bad. And if you have her lose to Rhea Ripley, it would be a costly mistake. Rhea Ripley needs to be at the bottom of the fucking barrel next to Damian Priest. Truthfully, that's where they need to be. There's just nothing else I could say about that. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley had their time in the sun. It's time for them to go. Look, I don't mind them losing a little bit. Build up other stars to have them have titles. I like the fact what they did with Nia Jax. Now that stuff's getting old on SmackDown. Time for Nia Jax to lose the title to Tiffany Stratton. I think that would be perfect. Maybe at Crown Jewel they pull that. Maybe they do that at... um. War games. I like the building up of the two bloodlines. They're building it up somewhat now. They're finally pulling the trigger on things. Solo Sokoa is trying to get Sami Zayn to join him. Then you have the vice versa with the original bloodline. I like that as well. Again, this show wasn't perfect. I would say this is a C average show. I would say it's a 675 all day long. I didn't think it was terrible. I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was in the middle, just like I said last week. I said the same thing about AEW last week. But here's the thing. My constituents want to say it's not okay when AEW does things, but WWE does it. It's okay. Triple H gets a pass. I don't understand that logic. I will never understand that logic. Um, again, this is where I'm wrong. I'm cutting up biased. I watched all shows. Again, Bound for Glory. I said in my streams on Saturday, as I was watching the Dodgers play, as I was eating dinner and streaming and playing Call of Duty, I told you guys then, as I will say now, I am not a big freaking fan of how they put the Full Metal Mayhem before the actual title match. Joe Henry should have went over. I thought it was a costly mistake that TNA did. I did not agree with the whole TNA, NXT type booking here. I think TNA is trying to be too much like the next coming of NXT. Be your own thing and stay in your own lane. Now, Slamovich and Jordan Grace, I would say, is one of the match of the year contenders for a women's match. There's nothing right now that can top it. I'm just going to say that hands down. Now, if we're going NXT Halloween Havoc, I gave that a C. I thought that was average. Um... I did, I did not care for certain things on the show. I felt that it was a little bit better than a TV pay-per-view. And um, again, Trick Williams, they're building up nicely. Hopefully they continue to do so. Um, the Don, like him winning, Omafeli said his goodbyes. He's now going to be on the main roster, which is good. Braun Breaker's going to need some people. Omafeli would be perfect for that. Um, they did the right things with Dominic Mysterio. The building up of Dominic, having him win with some interference. You need to have him win this way. You need him to look strong as a heel. He is getting cheap heat. He is getting basically what Eddie Guerrero back in the day was getting. It's a win-win all around, honestly. The Judgment Day needs to do better things and things like that. So, uh, let's see here. Uh... Let me move real quickly here on my recording. I'm moving, touching my monitors and stuff. And I don't know. Did my monitors turn back on? I don't know here. Let me see if I press that there. There we go. Um. Anyway, my bad there. 
But as I was saying to you guys before, this show was a C-average show. I'm not going to say it was terrible, bad. I'm not going to say Triple H has lost his mind with booking. It's just some things are becoming repetitive and stale. Now, Gunther, again, what are we going to do with him? Are we having him winning? Or are we having him losing to Cody Rhodes? We need to kind of figure this one out because you can have Gunther cut these beautiful promos, view beautiful video packages. You can have him call Cody and have him say the things about Orton. But if you're not building that, it just seems to me like Cody's going to go over. And to me, Cody's been ice cold compared to Gunther. I like Gunther more than Cody. I think Gunther, I honestly think they should swap the titles and have Cody be world heavyweight title. I just don't see him as a champion. Cody has been ice cold. It's been ice cold. It's been pathetic. He hasn't done anything that's been great, you know, to me, been great since WrestleMania and probably three months after the fact. He hasn't done anything lately to me. He, the belt should go off of him. I think a perfect candidate for that would be Randy Orton. I know he's going to blow through Kevin Owens, and I know Kevin Owens has a handshake deal with WWE to renew his contract with. It looks like that's where Kevin Owens is going. But it just feels like Kevin Owens would be better off out of WWE, honestly. They have done nothing with him except have him lose. Uh, again, I would have Kevin Owens win the title. Anybody but Cody Rhodes right now. I want to see Gunther win at fucking Crown Jewel, but that's not going to happen. Again, you know, and this is the other thing. My constituents, like JD from New York blocking me. You give Triple H a pass. But Triple H is booking rushed and kind of stale and repetitive. You know, more pe you know, that's why their viewerships are going down. More people are watching football. More people are watching the World Series. The World Series numbers are sky high. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's a reason why WWE is losing viewers. And in key demographics that they're really important with, NXT's not doing well. Again... Like I said, views don't matter because we're going to, you know, people are cutting the cord at a rate. It's going to be coming down to subscriptions and how many subscription buys and where these, you know, these companies lie. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you want to have Raw be hype. Raw is supposed to be your A show, right? Because it's going to Netflix, right? But it's not an A show. They, they, I don't know who they're booking for with these casual WWE fans that say, oh, everything is cinema and everything's great. This show needed to be better to me. For being two hours, for two hours, they need to go back to three if they're just going to be like this. Two hours is not enough and, and they're putting throwaway matches in the middle of all this, which is not good. That's why I'm giving it a C average. You know, the Jimmy and Jay's segment was great. I mean, we all know what's happening. We all know what's going on with that. We all know Sami Zayn is going to be a part of the, the bloodline. The, you know, the OTC stuff. We, we, we already know. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, I'm not surprised with, you know, with the whole two segments they had with that. You know, again, Sheamus beating uh, Da Vinci or was it Vinci? Let me go here into my notes. Ludwig Kaiser, sorry. Vinci, I don't know what they're doing with him on SmackDown. They brought him over to SmackDown, and he has been trash. <laughs> he's a jobber. Now he's, I think he's on fucking, um, I think they have him on fucking main event. Put the guy on speed. Vinci can go. Again, the War Raiders, again, good moves there. The War Raiders need to be winning. Them in the Final Testament need to meet. A uh, AOP need to meet the, the, the fucking War Raiders, and we need to have... What we had with the black and gold. Seriously. Royal Raiders got hurt. A I think AOP got released at the time. And they were going to go against each other back in the day. You need to have them go against each other now. It's best for business at this point. Now. I really disagree on the whole. Why AOP is not with Paul Ehring doing their own thing. And then they got to be part of this final testament that's been garbage. But again. Sheamus defeating with a bro kick. Again, like I said before, who gives a shit? Sheamus just resigned. They got to give Sheamus something. But Ludwig Kaiser, you know, I was reading articles that they were building this guy up to be the next coming of Gunther here. 
You have them just fucking lose. Bailey and Bronson Reed, they need they need Bronson Reed to go fucking over. They need Bronson Reed to go fucking over against Seth. If they don't do that, what was the whole point of building? What was the whole point of fucking building? Let's just get real here. What was the whole point of building Bronson Reed? Again, we all know CM Punk's winning the Rumble. That's what they were going to do last year. I really hope on the other side of that coin, I really hope now that they push Orton. I hope Orton gets a title in 2024, 2025. Because Cody ain't doing it for me. I don't know about you guys, but Cody sucks. And it's about time the guy loses a title. Yes, I don't know who, who you know, again... Cody said he's been fighting for the Wind Eagle. No, Cody, you just need to lose the title at this point. War Games, again, it looks like it's going to be the OTC versus our old bloodline versus new bloodline. Young younglings versus oldlings or whatever. We're going to be doing that. Who's going to get the baton? Who's going to get the things? Again, going into this, um, again, I have Liv Morgan beating Nia Jax, in fact, and Tiffany Stratton, again, cashing in on her. This week's, uh, this week's, uh, SmackDown, sorry, my, my digital assistant went off on my phone, you know, so hopefully, hopefully Stratton does become champion. Tiffany Stratton, I do hope becomes champion out of all of it. Um, like I said before. This show was a uh, six seven five. I didn't think it was that great. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst Monday Night Raw I've ever seen in my life. But again, I just wanted to clear uh, clear the air earlier in this VOD that I have literally uh, cleared the swamp out of all the negativity. I have been removing people as friends. I've been getting away from communities. I've been distancing myself. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, look, at the end of the day, look, I had to lock down things. I've been changing logos, making things look a little bit more professional here on this channel. And I've been focusing more on game streaming because that's my bread and butter. Anyway, you can catch me on Twitch. You can catch me on Kick. You can catch me on Beam. You can catch me on TikTok Live pretty much every day with something, uh, something game streaming wise at this point. Now, YouTube, I'm just going to be uploading news, stuff like that going forward. So just keep that in mind. Tomorrow when NXT, uh, I'll have a review for you guys up on the board for you guys. But as of right now, that's where I'm at. Uploads are going to be the thing. I may do lives here and there. Uh, Crown Jewel goes off the air. I'll review it for you guys right here on this very channel. Um, again... I was banned out of a few places last uh, the last couple of days for having an opinion. It is what it is. That person, JD, could believe whatever he wants to believe. If he wants to believe. And I know some of you are going to dislike me because I have an opinion about the guy. I know my YouTube short got a dislike because, what, I have a mouth and an opinion? Or your favorite commentator's commentator I'm talking shit about? Oh, well. I don't care. You can unfollow me. I don't care enough to care. But, anyway... I'm out skis. I'm going to uh, put this up for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy this review. Again, this show was decent. Um, they had a few other segments. Um, Pierce got mad, I guess, at uh, uh, Nick Aldis. Uh, again, like I said before, what's the difference? You know, it, it, The booking is just all over the place when, when it comes to Monday Night Raw right now. No wonder why views are slipping in key demographics. Anyway. My name is RevSauce9. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.